Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Metropolis Radio. Today we are talking about this idea that the Expendables 4 taking so long to happen can make it even better. Now, I do agree with this theoretically, but just because something gets delayed indefinitely doesn't mean that it will eventually be good. But before we get right down into this video, guys, just remember that at least one of my videos every week will not be on the YouTube channel. It will be exclusive to BitChute and Odyssey. If you're watching this on YouTube, the links to my BitChute and Odyssey channels are down below in the description. So anyway, guys, let's get let's get right into uh, this video talking about Expendables 4. Uh, the Expendables 4 is on, is on the way several years after its predecessor, but the long wait could end up being to the advantage of the upcoming sequel. Theoretically, yes, but practically, we're going to have to wait and see. Uh, the Expendables 4 has taken a long time to happen, arriving close to a decade after the last entry in the series. Well, The Expendables 3 came out in 2014, uh, so yeah, about, about eight years. Uh, but this has the potential to make it even better. Following years of false starts and development hell, The Expendables 4 finally entered production in 2021. Sylvester Stallone, Jason Statham, Dolph Lundgren, and Randy Couture are set to return, while The Expendables 4 will also add 50 Cent, Megan Fox, Tony Jaa, and Eco Uwais to its roster. A release date hasn't been set yet, but depending on the conditions of the COVID-19 pandemic in the general release calendar, uh, The Expendables 4 could hit theaters later in 2022. The Expendables franchise began, began with the 2010 original, which sold itself as the gathering of action heroes audiences had long been awaiting for. The success of The Expendables led to its 2012 sequel, The Expendables 2, which was an even bigger box office hit and widely regarded as the best of the franchise. Unfortunately, The Expendables 3 was unable to replicate the same level of success. This led to The Expendables taking a long break with rumors of fourth installment swirling, but never bearing fruit until The Expendables 4 finally got rolling. Well, the reason why The Expendables 3 did not replicate the success of The Expendables 1 and 2 is because The Expendables 3, they, the, the producers behind Expendables 3 decided in their infinite wisdom that it was a great idea to make, that, to make The Expendables 3 PG-13 when the first two movies were R-rated. You know, let's appeal to the teenage demographic, despite the fact that the whole point of The Expendables was it was to pay homage to the action movies of the 80s and 90s. I hate, to I hate to break this to you, most teenagers that are into the action movies of the 80s and 90s were really the exception and not, and, and not the rule. I, I was back in, the, back in the 2010s, and I, and I still am. I love the action movies of the 1980s, but again, I'm also intellectually honest enough to, to, to realize that I'm the exception in this case and not really the rule. Um, while it's been eight years since The Expendables' last mission, the long gap since The Expendables 3 could be a blessing in disguise. Big franchises sometimes, lo sometimes lose energy to such an extent that closing the book might seem like the wisest course of action. In other cases, it might simply be best to let the dust settle for a while after, after an underperformance to make a comeback possible. Here's why The Expendables 4 could prove to be an example of the latter. After the success of the first two Expendables movies, The Expendables 3 was a significant downturn. Commercially, The Expendables 3 pulled in $214.7 million, the lowest grossing of the three to date, with just with just $39.3 million from North America. Now keep in mind, The Expendables 3 was not a box office bomb. Okay, I just I, I just want to make that clear because this article doesn't re doesn't really, you know, do doesn't really go into that. Like, just because The Expendables 3 was the lowest grow the lowest grossing entry doesn't mean that it lost money. It just, the only thing that happened is it made less money than the first two. That's all it was. Uh, the film's misguided PG-13 rating has been pointed, has been pointed to as the main culprit for the failings of The Expendables 3. And I believe a couple of years ago, uh, even Sylvester Stallone came, came forward and said, yeah, making The Expendables 3 PG-13 was, was, pro was the biggest mistake that we made. Uh, while that's certainly a factor after the first two R-rated installments, the movie's overall reception did the series no favors either. The Expendables 3 is generally regarded as the weakest movie in the franchise with an ensemble that had grown that had grown much too large. Yes, because they tried to force in the younger team at the expense of the older team, and then they tried to and then they tried to intermingle the two, and it, it just didn't work. Uh, the film's failure underst understandably slowed all, pro slowed all progress on continuing the franchise, but this ended up being for the best. After such a steep drop, giving it a break for a few years while taking the time to consider what, what the best revival strategy could be was the best way for it to return. The long, gap, uh, the long gap also allowed The Expendables 4 to give itself a new hook. After 
As The Expendables 4 entered production, there was much speculation that the movie would be Stallone's last in the series, and that, and that was confirmed, and we did do a video on this channel regarding that. Uh, this was partially fueled by the rumor titled the, Expe the Expendables A Christmas Story, referencing Jason Statham's character Lee Christmas. Stallone eventually confirmed that The Expendables 4 is Barney Ross's last ride, also stating that he's ready to pass the baton to Jason. By passing the reins from Barney Ross to Lee Christmas, The Expendables 4 is now much more than simply the belated fourth chapter of the series. Well, and to be to be fair though, you know, Sylvester Stallone now is, he's how old? He's like 74, 75 now? Uh, let me look that up real quick. I know you guys can't see my screen, but I'm going to type this real quick. Sylvester Stallone. Uh, cause I swear he's at least 75. Um, 46. Hold on. Let me make sure. Um, da -da. yeah, yeah, he's 75. So the Expendables 4 being his last movie is, is anyone genuinely shocked that the Expendables 4 is Stallone's last movie, given the fact he's now a 75 year old man. Um, had The Expendables 4 simply been made as the next movie in the series, it would have a much steeper hill to climb after the failure of The Expendables 3. The series' decline needed to incentivize audiences to return, and the newly reinstated R rating of The Expendables 4 is a good start on that front. Being marketed as a torch-passing legacy sequel gives The Expendables 4 a whole new gimmick. With the, film, with, the, with the film marking the fourth appearance of Barney Ross, he's being one of Sylvester Stallone's most enduring characters. The idea of, Bar of Barney finally retiring, retiring alongside the general nostalgic component of The Expendables makes The Expendables 4 a unique entry in the series. However, aside from Lee succeeding him, a few of the new members of the cast are some, are some of its biggest drawing points. And I'm going to say this just before, just before we move on, um, right here. The idea of Barney finally retiring alongside the general nostalgic component of The Expendables. So I'm just, I'm just going to pose this out there right, right now. What's, what is now the point of The Expendables beyond the fourth movie if you're going to move away from the nostalgia? Remember, The Expendables and The Expendables 2 were homages to action movies of the 80s and 90s. If you're wanting to move away from it, then don't call it the then don't call it The Expendables. Just retire the series and 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 create and create something new. But that but that's just my but that's just my opinion. Anyway, guys, let's move on. Let's move on to the final point here. The entire basis of The Expendables has always been bringing together an action star ensemble every time, more specifically of the 1980s and the 1990s. By enlisting Tony John Eco Uace, The Expendables 4 has already driven anticipation to new levels. Not only are both incre incredible martial artists, he each has headlined some of the some of the best action movies ever made. Ja broke out with, with Ong Bak and, and, and Tom Young Gong. Uh, while Uace led the Raid movies and other Indonesian action hits like, Head, like, like Headshot. Both have also since achieved mainstream popularity in the West as well. Um, Eco Uace, I'll, gi I'll give you for the raid. The raid was really popular when it came here to the West, but I would argue Tony Jaw has ne has never been as popular. I mean, sure, he did he did the Ong Back movies, but like, unless if you're really really into action movies, you have no idea who Tony Jaw is. I I remember being shocked that uh, that Tony Jaw was going to be in a. Uh, in, a fa in, in Fast and Furious 7, but even I understood that, like, most of the general audience is not going to know who, who this guy is because, you know, you have to really, really be into action movies in order to know who Tony Jaa is. Uh, after his rise as a martial artist in Thailand, Tony Jaa made the transition to Hollywood with action movies like Skin Trade, Furious 7, and Jiu Jitsu. A again, I, I believe Skin Trade was just a, was a straight to video, was a, was a straight to video movie. Obviously, Furious 7 was in theaters. And I believe Jiu-Jitsu suffered the same fate of just being a straight-to-video action movie. Uh, Uwais also established a Western presence with Beyond Skyline. I have I have never heard anyone praise Beyond Skyline. Uh, and the Netflix series Wu Assassins. And both were also key players in the action ensemble Triple Threat. With John Uwais both known and acclaimed action stars around the world, their presence in The Expendables 4 makes the, makes the movie a much bigger deal. Furthermore, as the villain of the sequel, Uwais also also adds a whole new element to the series and likely being its most hands-on antagonist. Set photos show Jason Statham in a confrontation with Uwais' character, corroborating the notion of the kind of Expendables 4 villain U Eco Uwais will be. And again, we did do a video on this channel where we went over the various set photos, the set photos between Eco Uwais and Jason Statham we did, uh, we did cover. Um, 
With the possibility of Jot and Uways also facing off in the Expendables 4, audiences will have a lot to will have a lot to draw them back to the franchise after its long hibernation. But that that's gonna really depend on if they're if they're big enough action movie fans to even know who Tony Jaw and Eco Uways is. More more so Tony Jaw. Like I said, the ra- the raid was the raid was incredibly popular, but on back, like I said, unless if you're really into action movies, you're not gonna know what the hell the on back trilogy is. Um, the irony of the long wait for the return of the Expendables is that it's arguably put the franchise back in the very position it began with, namely that's riding a wave of nostalgia for action movie glory days. The Expendables 4 has a lot going for it with the legacy element of Stallone handing, handing the series off to Statham and the boarding of John U.A.'s. Even, even with these assets, the Expendables 4 might, might have still faced quite a challenge in re-energizing the series if it had come just two or three years after the Expendables 3. With several years worth of breathing room on its side, the Expendables 4 can, can, can far more vigorously capitalize on what, on what it brings to the franchise. And personally, guys, I'm going to go ahead and just end the video with this. I think the Expendables 4 should, should be the final entry in the franchise. If, you, if, you're gonna, if, you're gonna, if, if they are going to truly retire the nostalgia elements from the Expendables, then there's, there's no point to the series existing. I'd, I would rather, you know, I would rather, you know, Jason Statham, Eco UA's Tony Jaw, 50 Cent, just go, go, off and, go off and make a new franchise. Don't try to bank on the Expendables name. Because you're going to lose that magic of the Expendables, and I know I've said this time and time again, and I know I'm going to sound like a broken record, but I'm going to say, uh, but I'm going to say again just to hammer my point home: the Expendables was meant as an homage to the action movies of the '80s and '90s. If you try to move away from it, it's 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 not going to work. I think it's going to piss a lot more people off than you know than, than intended. You know, there there's nothing wrong with starting with start with starting a new franchise rather than you know rather than run the Expendables into the fucking ground, in my opinion. And guys, I'm going to go ahead and end it right here before I tangent it off for way longer than I need to. Uh, so if you stuck around this long, thanks so much for doing so. And if you've been following along on a video, I'm terrible at ending these videos. So I will just see you guys uh, next time.